Mr. President, members of the council, today we must address our attention to the realities of the situation posed by the buildup of nuclear striking power in Cuba. In this connection, I want to say at the outset that the course adopted by the Soviet Union yesterday to avoid direct confrontations in the zone of quarantine uh, are welcome to my government. We also welcome the assurance by Chairman Khrushchev in his letter to Earl Russell that the Soviet Union will take no reckless decisions with regard to this crisis. And we welcome most of all the report that Mr. Khrushchev has agreed to the proposals advanced by the Secretary General. Perhaps that report will be confirmed here today. My government is most anxious to effect a peaceful resolution of this affair. We continue to hope that the Soviet Union will work with us to diminish the, not only the new danger, which has suddenly shadowed the peace, but uh, all of the conflicts that divide the world. I shall not detain you with any detailed discussion of the Soviet and the Cuban responses to our complaint. The speeches of the communist delegates were entirely predictable. I shall make brief comment on some points suggested by these speeches and some other points which may have arisen in the minds of members of the United Nations. Both Chairman Khrushchev in his letter to Earl Russell and Ambassador Zorin in his remarks to this council argued that this threat to the peace had been caused not by the Soviet Union and Cuba, but by the United States. We are here today um, and have been this week for one single reason. Because the Soviet Union secretly introduced this menacing offensive military buildup into the island of Cuba while assuring the world that nothing was further from their thoughts. The argument in its essence of the Soviet Union it is that it was not the Soviet Union which created this threat to peace by secretly installing these weapons in Cuba, but that it was the United States which created this crisis by discovering and reporting these installations. This is the first time I confess that I've ever heard it said that the crime is not the burglar, but the discovery of the burglar. And that the threat is not the clandestine missiles in Cuba, but their discovery and the limited measures taken to quarantine further infection. The peril arises not because the nations of the Western Hemisphere have joined together to take necessary action in their self-defense, but because the Soviet Union has extended its nuclear threat into <clears throat> the Western Hemisphere. I noted that there is still at least some delegates in the Council, possibly, I suspect, very few, uh, who say that they don't know whether the Soviet Union has, in fact, uh, built in Cuba installations capable of firing nuclear missiles over uh, ranges from 1,000 to 2,000 miles. As I say, Chairman Khrushchev did not deny these facts in his letter to Earl Russell, nor did um, Ambassador Zorin on Tuesday evening. And if further doubt remains on this score, we shall gladly exhibit photographic evidence to the doubtful. 
One other point I'd like to make, Mr. President and gentlemen, is to invite attention to the casual remark of the Soviet representative claiming that we have 35 bases in foreign countries. The facts are that there are missiles comparable to these being placed in Cuba with the forces of only three of our allies. And they were only established there by a decision of the heads of government meeting in December 1957, which was compelled to authorize such arrangements by virtue of a prior Soviet decision to introduce its own uh, missiles capable of destroying the countries of Western Europe. In the next place, <clears throat> there are some troublesome questions in the minds of members that um, are entitled to serious answers. 